Nothing is worse than when your fancy gaming PC suffers this fate. It can feel like having a Ferrari with bicycle tires. In today's video, we'll go over PC gaming bottlenecks and explain how CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage all affect your game. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, I'm Trisha Hirschberger and you are watching DIY in 5 the series where we aim to make tech simple to understand in videos that are five minutes or less. In the world of PC gaming, it's all about smooth performance. So when bottlenecks occur, aka when one component of your system holds back the performance of others, it's a real bummer. Let's go over how these bottlenecks happen and how you can get the most out of your gaming rig. The most common bottlenecks in gaming PCs occur in the CPU, central processing unit, or GPU, graphics processing unit. The CPU handles all the non-graphic tasks. Think game logic, AI behavior, game physics, etc. Certain game genres, like open world RPGs, for example, are particularly CPU intensive. And if your CPU isn't up to the task, it can hold up the rest of your system as a result, giving you this. Not only will you get poor performance in terms of stuttering, FPS drops, a CPU bottleneck where your CPU is at full capacity while your GPU is underutilized, it can cause excess temperatures and energy usage as well. Okay, now let's talk about the other side of the coin. When your GPU, which handles all the graphical rendering in your game, think shadows, lighting, textures, is the one struggling to keep up and your CPU has some free time on its hands. This is most common in games that are pushing the limits of resolution and frame rates like Cyberpunk 2077 or Black Myth Wukong. When a GPU bottleneck occurs, your CPU sends more data to the GPU than it can handle, giving you lower frame rates or forcing you to use lower graphic settings or disable ray tracing. Not cool. Quite literally, actually. To balance these out, you might consider upgrading your CPU or GPU, which is great. However, upgrading other components like RAM or storage can also be a big help in these situations. Having faster RAM with enough capacity for your gaming allows your system to store temporary data that your CPU and GPU need to access quickly, thus reducing the strain on those components and improving overall system performance. Having faster storage, like you'll get on NVMe SSDs, means your games load data much faster, reducing lag during gameplay and allowing textures and maps to load instantly, which is particularly helpful in open world games or when switching between levels. Now, while lightning fast read and write speeds won't directly help a CPU or GPU bottleneck, the bump in overall system performance makes the gaming experience smoother and more responsive, so you may notice the bottlenecks less. You may also want to consider other upgrades as well. An overheating CPU or GPU can mimic the effects of a bottleneck, so upgrading your cooling system can help keep temps down and maintain peak performance. Instability and crashes can be caused by a PSU, power supply unit that just can't keep up. So upgrading to make sure you have enough power for everything can be great as well. Pro tip, leave about 200 to 250 watts of headroom. An upgrade to a motherboard that supports newer and faster CPUs, RAM, and storage can't hurt either. Although I always feel like upgrading your motherboard basically feels like a full system rebuild. So I'd recommend trying the other solutions first if possible. In short, Bottlenecked components are no fun and can seriously put a damper on your precious game time. It's all about balance, making sure your components are all working together in harmony. If you have any questions that this video didn't answer, leave them in the comments and I will see you next time with more DIY in 5.